Hello everybody, all the MetaGrid Pro users out there and those of you who haven't tried MetaGrid Pro yet. My name is Paul, I am a Warsaw Poland based music producer and sound engineer and yes, I am a big fan of MetaGrid Pro and I'm a user of this app. And yes, this is actually the second time I'm here for you because I already did a series of tutorial vids for MetaGrid 1 and now when MetaGrid Pro is out, I'm back to make another series of tutorials for you so that you learn what is MetaGrid Pro, how can you use it and why actually is it so great. Let's get into it. What is MetaGrid Pro, you may ask those of you who haven't tried it yet? Well, to put it really simple, it's an iPad app that transforms your screen, the touchscreen of your iPad, into a grid of highly customizable buttons that can serve you as key commands, macros, MIDI controller, and more. And to make it up and running, well, the basic setup is very, very simple and I can show it to you right now. First of all, you have to visit Metasystem.io and in the downloads section, you have a Meta server application, both for Mac and Windows. You just download it and you launch it and you're gonna have it here on Windows. We're not gonna get into deeper setup of Meta server for now. You've got it up and running and that's fine for now. The second thing you have to do is that you have to visit App Store and download MetaGrid Pro. I already did it, so now I'm gonna open it. One more important thing, both your computer and your iPad have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network or you have to connect your iPad to the computer using USB cable. Anyway, I'm using Wi-Fi now, my computer and MetaGrid are using the same network and when I press MetaGrid Pro button, loading data, searching for, for the network, and there you go. This is kind of easy, <laughs> right? And let's take a look what we've got here. And the very start screen of MetaGrid Pro is already a grid of buttons, but it's a special one, I would say, because this is to help you start. This is a quick guide of your MetaGrid Pro. So Dashboard is going to explain for you the general layout of the app. Here are the settings, the scenes, the lock button, grid selector, back button, edit button, omnispace. We're gonna get back to all of this in details in separate episodes. Let's get back with this yellow button here. And flexible grid, what does that mean? Well, those of you that are familiar with MetaGrid version one know that it was all fixed buttons, the same size of buttons. You could, you could choose the size of the grid at the very beginning, but then all the buttons were the same. Now, each of your buttons can be different. You can make them large, small, square, long, uh, horizontally or vertically, etc., etc. We're gonna also cover it in the separate episode. Mm, and this is really cool. This seems like a huge improvement, if you ask me. And now let's get to the Content Manager guide. And Content Manager is the place where you organize everything simply in MetaGrid. The main instance is your profile. You can have more than one, of course. Then profiles can be split into separate workspaces filled with different grids. You can also assign grids to scenes to make them work even better for you. Of course, that's gonna be covered in a separate video video too. You can import and export everything you create in MetaGrid in various ways using Dropbox, iOS, ShareMany. You can back up the whole database and you can also upload content from MetaGrid version 1, which is cool for me because I do already have my grids from version 1. Now let's get to macros and actions because you can see me press some buttons which navigate me to different buttons. But what all that can do, what is it capable of? And it's all described here. Each button can be a keyboard shortcut. You can even write a text using a button. You can activate an app 
you can send a MIDI message, you can make a macro, which is really something powerful, and this is what I love most about MetaGrid. So I can make a chain of keyboard shortcuts or keyboard short shortcuts and MIDI commands and more to perform more complex custom actions for any of my app on my PC. Then, if you are a Mac user, you can use Keyboard Maestro also to work with MetaGrid. You can also launch app-specific actions because MetaGrid is already integrated with some software you're gonna find on your computer, and it's a dream for music and sound people like me. Because Logic Pro X, Ableton Live, Cubase, Dorico, Studio One, Digital Performer, Reaper, and also Keyboard Maestro. And of course, there will be a separate episode about integrations too. What's more, MIDI faders. This is a new thing. Look, I can even demo it. Yes, it's a new thing, MIDI faders. Well, you know what a MIDI fader is probably if you're a music person, so let's not focus on it right now. As for support for MIDI actions, you can send note on, note off, CC program change. Or you can also make MIDI CC steps. You can also send UACC to work with your Spitfire audio articulations. This is cool, actually, and I'm a user of Spitfire audio software. And also, it's bi-directional MIDI, so you can send MIDI from a MetaGrid Pro to your computer, and you can send the MIDI to MetaGrid Pro 2. And now to give you a glimpse what MetaGrid Pro is capable of, I'm gonna launch Cubase integration. And I've got a grid already pre-made. My main DAW, my main music software is Nuendo. It's very similar to Cubase. It's not the same, but this should work with Nuendo too. Let's see. That's my MetaGrid Pro, that's one of my projects in Nuendo, and the console that Meta system people uh, designed is kind of clear to me, so I can surely press, press play. To make it uh, play, I can move through markers, for example. Yes, exactly. Um, I can, for example, turn the mixer on, am I right? Yes, this is the mixer. Um, uh, this is the mixer visibility, actually. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I can edit my audio channel settings, yes. I can edit my instrument. I, I do have one here. Yes, it's here. Etc, etc, etc. And guys, please remember, this is just the very beginning of what can happen for you in MetaGrid Pro. All right, that's it for today, guys. I hope that you like what I have just presented to you, and I hope that new MetaGrid Pro seems compelling to you. I have to tell you that it's so compelling for me that I cannot simply imagine right now working without it. It's as much needed in what I do as my keyboard and mouse, but it can do so much more. And in the following episodes, I'm gonna show you why and how. MetaGrid Pro can become an amazing, really amazing booster for your creativity and everyday tasks that you perform using your PC or Mac. Mm, that's it for today, guys. Hope to see you next time. Bye.